what is RISEF W? RISEF W, or also written and pronounced as RISEF, is the most common acronym heard by every SAP functional and technical consultant, irrespective of the module they are into. And obviously, there are many questions around it. What is it? Why do we need it? Who should do it? And how to do it? In this video, I am going to explain in detail about what is RISEFW and what does an SAP consultant has to do with this. Hey, this is Abhiram and welcome back to my channel. Before we go into the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to keep notified when a new video is released. I'm happy that there are many people who like and watch my videos, but there are only 20% of them who are subscribed to the channel. Not only it's free for you to subscribe to my channel, but it also helps me in posting more and more videos. So please do subscribe to the channel if you like my videos and want to see many more such videos coming. So what is RISEFW? The acronym RISEFW stands for Reports, Interface, Conversion, Enhancement, Form and Workflow. Before we go deep into each of these, let us first understand what are these for and when do we use this. In an implementation or a rollout project, whenever a client's requirement is not fulfilled by the standard SAP functionality, then there is a change required to be done in SAP to meet the requirement. For example, the client might require a custom company-specific tax invoice format, or the client requires a customized approval workflow for creation of a vendor account in SAP. These requirements are not fully supported by the standard SAP functionality. All of these non-standard requirements can be met by customizing or enhancing the existing functionality provided by SAP. In simple, we need some development in the system. This development can often be categorized based on its nature as one of these RISEFW objects. It can be a report, a form, an interface to a third-party system, etc. Most of the times, to meet one requirement, it might need to develop more than one RISEF object in SAP. Now, who does this development in the system. While it is the technical consultant who developed the system, it is the work of a functional consultant to gather the proper requirement from the client and convert that verbal requirement into a format that can be related with SAP and hand it over to the technical consultant. So the role of a functional consultant is very crucial in building these RISEFW objects. So we understood what is RISEFW and the role of a functional or a technical consultant in that. Now let us go into when and how do we need to work on the RISEFW objects. RISEFWs are highly relevant in the explore and the realize phases of the activate methodology. During the explore phase, the functional consultant sits with the client to understand the business process and capture the requirements. Then a fit gap analysis is done against these requirements based on whether or not they can be achieved with the standard SAP functionalities. For all those requirements agreed as gaps, the functional consultant needs to decide what type of development, rather what type of RISEFW object is required to achieve the client's requirement in SAP. So it is pivotal for a functional consultant to clearly understand the business requirement and relate it to SAP and decide whether or not it is feasible. Once the RISEFW exercise is done by the functional consultant against all the captured requirements, which are marked as gap. During the build phase, the functional consultant needs to sit again with the client users to get the necessary logic or the template on how to build the RISEFW object. Once done, these details are passed on to the technical consultant, be it an evapor or an integration consultant or a workflow consultant who develops or enhances the system accordingly. Functional consultant needs to closely coordinate with the technical consultant to simplify the logic and explain how exactly the requirement can be achieved. Now, let us understand about each and every of these RISEFW object with a real world example. Let us start with a report. A report is an executable program that reads data from the tables and generates output in the specified format. We need to provide the selection criteria in the program based on which the report should be pick up the data and the logic based on which it can convert or perform calculations on the data and the layout in which the data should be displayed after execution of the report. While there are many reports provided in the standard SAP, it is quite common for every business to have a customized report as per their needs. These are called as custom reports. The few important components of a report are selection screen. This contains the fields based on which the user wants to filter and select data from the database. For example, the user wants a report of the total tax paid to the government. The user would also like to slice this data based on the type of tax, that means whether it is an input tax or an output tax, and the region, for example, the state and the duration, be it a month, 
year or a custom date range. So these criteria will be part of the selection screen which a user can see when he runs the report program. While the user might not be able to understand about the tables behind these fields, it is the role of a functional consultant to identify the tables and provide the data to the technical consultant. The next component is the logic. Reports might not always be straightforward like picking and pasting the data from the tables. There might be some logic in which the data should be selected and some calculations to be performed on the data before displaying it on the screen. All of this cannot be given in the selection screen. The logic or the calculation to be performed should be written in a program by a technical consultant. For this, the functional consultant should first understand the logic from the business users and pass it on to the technical consultant. For example, the user does not want to see the tax payments which are less than 500 rupees. So based on this logic, the program should not display the tax items which are having an amount less than 500 rupees. The third component of the report is the output. Now the data is selected and the logic is applied. Next is to display this data in the format required by the users. This is called as an output format. Again, it is the role of the functional consultant to get a template of this format from the business and provide it to the technical consultant. The next object is the interface. Interface as the word means is a connection between two different systems. It can be a two different SAP systems or an SAP and a non-SAP legacy systems. For two different systems to communicate, it is important to have a proper communication channel to pass the data to and fro. This bridge is called as an interface. In real world, there are various external systems, for example, SAP Conquer, Bloomberg, Reuters, OpenText, etc., which are widely used by the businesses to ease their operations and get or pass useful information. All these external systems are connected via interfaces. Interface are always custom development and there will be no standard interface that suits every purpose. For example, in order to pay to the taxes to the government, client needs their SAP system to connect with the GST portal so that the tax details can directly be passed to the portal and the payment can be done. For this, an interface is to be built to pass and receive the data to and from the external system. The data is commonly exchanged using interfaces like IDOCS or through PIPO service. The next object in our RiceFW is the conversion. Conversion in simple can be defined as changing the format of data from one to another. For example, if you are implementing SAP S4 HANA to a business which is currently running on SAP ERP or any non-SAP legacy system. Once the new S4 HANA system is implemented, the master and the transactional data from the legacy system to should be migrated to the new system. For this, the data might need to be converted into a specific format recognized by the new system. This is called as conversion. Most often, the used data conversion tools are LSMW, LTMC and BDC. This development is again done by the technical consultant, but the requirements are to be provided by the functional consultant on how the legacy data should be mapped to the new format for conversion. The next object is enhancement. This is the most often used ISFW object. Many of the client requirements might not be possible to achieve with the standard functionality or given by SAP. These are achieved by enhancing the existing program or by building a completely new program and a transaction code. Example, the requirement can be as simple as the client requiring a validation of a GL code using a standard SAP functionality or one might need to customize it in such a way that the user requires a validation of a GL code while posting a document based on the document type. This can be achieved by developing a validation in the system. Or the requirement sometimes can be as complex as triggering an email to the account after every successful posting of a tax invoice. So in these cases, we might need to build a new program or to enhance the existing program based on this requirement. Enhancements are mostly done via user exits, baddies or customer exits, etc. The functional consultant need to understand the requirement properly so that the technical consultant can implement it in the system correctly. The next object is forms. Forms are nothing but the printouts taken from SAP. It can be an invoice copy, a shipping bill or anything. For example, the client requires to have their logo on every invoice printed and also the format of the invoice should be as per their existing template which they are using. This can be achieved by developing an SAP smart form. These forms are linked to the data in the database. This data is arranged in the required layout which is then printed or emailed. Every type of correspondence usually requires a form in SAP. While there are many standard forms provided by SAP, 
there will be a high chance that your client is requesting for a new form which needs to be developed. It is the role of a functional consultant to get the template of the printout form from the business and provide it to the technical consultant. Now the last object in RiceFW is the workflow. Workflow is the flow of data from one level to another or one person to another. Example, client wants the head tax accountant to approve all the tax invoices posted by his or her team members. For this, the document posting transaction needs to be enhanced to trigger an approval workflow whenever a user tries to save the invoice without any errors. An approval can be of any levels based on the business requirement. For example, the invoice needs to be approved only by the head accountant, which is a one level workflow or by both the accountant and the manager, which is called as a two level workflow. The logic of the number of workflow levels to be triggered and the selection of the right user in SAP for the workflow levels is built by the workflow consultant. It is based on the requirements gathered by the functional consultant. And these workflow once triggered can be approved by the approvers in the transaction SBWP or which is our SAP business workplace. Now this is all about the rise of objects in SAP. Hope you have liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. Now you can also contribute to make more videos by joining the channel and becoming a super member. In return, you will get a special access to the member exclusive super videos and content. See you in the next video. Until then, stay safe.